Davey, back for London after the game of QPR, did you find that a worthwhile trip? Yeah, I thought it was really, really good to be honest. Um, long bus journey for some of the players, I was lucky to make it, I was in my bed a couple of days before it. But anyway, we got down there, um, I thought the first 15 minutes he came out the traps flying QPR. Had a point to prove, it's a, quite a tight park, but you probably don't see that if you're watching the television. Uh, they started a really strong team, we started really strong, but then we both changed it at half time and again, both teams were strong teams. Anyway, first 15 minutes, I think they caught us a wee bit with the intensity in their press. Found ourselves 2-0 down, but chances created within the game and how we played in the first half. There wasn't a lot in the game, but I thought we created enough chances to probably score one or two goals to go in level. So you go in 2-0 down, but you make the changes, but they made a few changes back well. When I say they make changes, they bring Lyndon Dykes on at half time, so it tells you the types of changes are made. But again, we changed our full midfield and we might have bring these Steph Holt to pitch, people that are on, so we were, we were still very strong myself. Second half, I thought we were decent, got the ball down, managed to open the park up a wee bit, scored a fantastic first, um, first goal. Um, and Big Joel was unlucky not to get a penalty just before he came off because it's a stonewall penalty. And Hopefully that makes it two each, but Joel had to come off, um, nothing to worry about to be honest, but um, it was a stonewall penalty that we never got, that probably would have made it two each, hopefully we would have made it two each. Um, but a really worthwhile exercise and it was good to let the players see um, QPR mid-level championship, maybe a touch more than that potentially, hopefully. Um, but um, it, sh it gave the boys an opportunity you see the levels you need to get in terms of physicality, power, strength and you see the ball. I'm talking about all these attributes but they can look after the ball as well so it was a good exercise. You touched on the goal, obviously a number of players involved, a really good, well worked um, team move, a good finish from Joe. You must be pleased going down to a, a place like that against a team of that calibre and, and scoring such a well worked goal. Yeah, we had two or three opportunities very similar in the first half but where I thought stick the ball away, it's an extremely good goal. I think there's one that sticks in my mind with Dylan, the keeper comes out off his line, but we worked the ball extremely well and get it to the other side. Dylan's in a great area and we've done that on two or three occasions, maybe Nicky Devlin. I think me Bruce should do better with one that breaks to him as well. But in terms of the goal, I was really, really pleased. It was a good pass as you play, we opened him up. I think Jackson dummies it in the box and Joel puts it away, so Joel's made that run. So no, it was, really, it was, a, it was a really well worked goal. Um, so, delighted with that. Obviously, you touched on London Dykes being down there, also another familiar face in Osman Kakai. Did you get a chance to speak to the, the two boys? Hi, <laughs> London, obviously, I keep in touch with London only fairly regular. So, managed to see London face to face, spent a good wee bit of time with London before the game, spent a wee bit of time with London after the game, he was in the change room coming to see all the staff and the players, so spent a wee bit of time with him. Uh, full time, Oz came over, um, had a great wee chat with Oz, seven years. Seven years since he was last year, came up here, was talking to him about it, him and Andy Impey. Um, it was Andy that brought uh, Oz up along me, um, Chris Ramsey and Hoppy obviously. Um, so I was talking to Andy about that, Andy's still at QPR, obviously I'm still at Livingston. Um, and Oz was saying he came up here, a young man, 17, 18 year old, and he said and it really, really helped him get ready for men's football. He's now seven years later playing with QPR in the championship and got two kids. So what a story, like it was, it was nostalgic just seven years ago and it, it was hard to, I didn't think it was that long really, but it shows you how quick football progresses. Um, so it was really, really nice to catch up with. Obviously with 10 minutes to go in the game, a big moment for the club and a big moment for the player himself, with Lucas Stenhouse coming off the bench for um, for the final 10 minutes of the game. Now 2005, just turned 17 year old. Can you a good testament to the likes of you know, Stevie Pittman, Derek McWilliams at the, the 18s and the, the pathway for the academy as a whole? Well, I think, yeah, I think B. Lucas was in the building before Stevie and Deeks, to be honest, so testament to the academy staff. I think Jimmy Dunn and that played a massive part in getting B. Lucas in, but again, it was just opening up. I think B. Lucas accepted one of the open trials. He knows um, Bully McPhee, his next door neighbours were one of my friends, so there's a good tie in there, but for me, B. Lucas was playing with Livingston United, I think it was, at Grassroots in Livingston. That's where he's been playing, Living United Boys Club Football. Um, took the chance to come in on an open invitation, albeit I think he'd been in and around the West Lothian Youth Foundation training programmes over the years, so he was kind of half known to some of them. 
um, comes in, got him in for a week or so training, and I thought, Do you know what, the kid, the kid's okay, he's uh, got ability, but for me, his attitude and his application is top notch, and me personally, I'd rather be coaching somebody with a great attitude and a great application to coming into work every day. Then maybe some that I've came across over the years that I've got all the ability in the world but kind of fail in the application the attitude aspect. So I thought I'll take them down to QPR. I remember mean, sitting on the bench and Joe and Nicky, Joe and Nicky's in the dugout. Joe's just came off with the pen um, and Nicky, Nicky came off at half time obviously. So Nicky's and Joe sitting in the dugout and I said, look me man, I want some game time. He's looked at me because I don't think he expected to go on the park. And you're looking at this wee 17 year old kid who's built like that, and you're looking at on the park, and you're looking at grown men that have played championship football. They're all like athletes, powerhouses. He's like, uh -huh, uh -huh. I said, Look, you need to watch yourself physically. Are you okay going on and with these boys? I what are you going? It was brilliant, honestly. Just, just to see the endeavour, the desire to go on the park wasn't frightened, really, really. Really, really brave the way he goes about his game of football, and that's one of the things I like about him. In terms of on the ball and off the ball, he's very brave. And he goes on the park, and uh, he's not really touched the ball. I think he took a couple of touches of the ball, and the fourth officials went, "Do you want to play this stoppage time?" He goes, "Of course, I want to play this stoppage time. I want to score, but I want to be, I want to be seventeen-year-old kid to try and get a wee bit more touches of the ball." So I kept shouting to Steph and Jack, "Oh, give him the ball, give him the ball!" So I wanted to see him get his uh, full back. I think he'd done that on one occasion, but I actually think they took the ball off him, but it's a learning curve, but it was an opportunity, a high ball, heady ball, and it's n no way in earth he's, he got a right to go and challenge for it with the centre half, and he's came running in, he's went up for the header, got a touch on the header, actually put the centre half all, and um, ended up in his back, let's say, um, but it was an introduction to men's football, and do you know what, he got up with a smile on his face, it was brilliant, a great wee moment for Lucas, but Really delighted for everybody in the academy, delighted for everybody at the club. Um, and hopefully we can, I've got another one coming in, got Max Williamson, he's coming away with us as well. Max has been in the academy a short period of time to be honest, and Max and Lucas are going to come away to Turkey with us. Can he promise them game time, but if I can get them as much coaching into them and first team experience as I can, I'll do that. And hopefully over the next three to six months, I'll try if there's boys within the 18s that I think I've got a wee bit of, they're, they're going to come in and be able to compete at training, um, I'll try and dip them in and out of first team training and potentially the 16s as well, depending on their development, so it's nice to have that academy to look at and fall back on and bring and introduce them into first team football, for me that's what football's all about, try to get bring young players in, develop them, whether they're going to go on and play for Livingston or whether they're going to have a career a bit higher up the tree or whether they're going to play anywhere within the 42 league SPFL structure. It's about giving these boys the opportunity to play um, professional football. As you touched on there, obviously after a busy, a busy trip down to London, we're now off to Turkey tomorrow for a week-long training camp. Two friendlies, FK Lepaja from Latvia, and then one off for Tuna Sittard or Adana Demerspor from Turkey on um, later on in the week. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping to get out of this kind of trip? A week long away, boys kind of bonding, time for them to get to know each other a bit better, but a lot of minutes on the, the grass as well. <sighs> you're doing double sessions, so you're doing double sessions, but recently, the last probably four to six weeks, training is very, very difficult. You stop and start training because of the temperatures, it's wet, it's windy, it's really, really cold. So stop and training sessions and then try to put as much detail into the training sessions or debate the training sessions. It's difficult with the temperatures and the conditions sometimes in a, a winter in Scotland. But when you're going away, it gives you a wee bit more time. and The players are probably a little bit more receptive to training, stopping and starting when the temperatures are in their favour. So you're getting double sessions in their legs, you're getting a lot of coaching within those double sessions and it just brings everyone together, you're eating, sleeping together, so you're spending a lot of quality time with one another and it creates relationships and bonds that hopefully go on to kick us on the rest of the season. That'll bring us back into a really busy schedule when we get back to, to the competitive stuff, five games in, in 17 days when we return, including trips to Celtic Park and Easter Road. Is our target set for that? Is it simply the case of one game at a time and, and see where that takes us? One game at a time, Dave. I'm no big on creating targets and you maybe fall short of your targets where you, like, you've got to pick your boys up. So the way I've always coached is just one game at a time and see where it takes us. I'm, we're sitting in a no bad place in the league, but we've got a wee opportunity over these next 
five games to try and pick as much points up as possible to try and kick us on in the league game. The collective has to be, we want to try and finish in the top six. The objective is 10th and above, but our aspirations change on a weekly, monthly basis, depending on how your, your league campaign's going. So at this point in time, we're sitting fourth in the league. We'd love to try and stay fourth. We'd love to get in the top six. By doing fourth, obviously you're going to achieve that. But um, if you can't get fourth, well, who knows, who knows, but top six and then, but again, got to put it into perspective, we want to stay in the Premier League, but we'll just take one game at a time and see where it takes us. You've touched on the fact that there's a, a, the full squad will be required when you come into a, a, a spell like that, I've seen a few players out in recent weeks, you know, Shamal George, Curtis Guthrie, Jamie Brandon, Tom Parks, is there any sort of update we have them back available for this, this running games in December? Shamal's coming out, Shamal will be training, I'm no, we've not got the finances to take injured players away with us to be honest, if you're going to spend time on the grass park with ourselves or the goalie coach, we'll take boys away, so Shamal, Shamal's going to come away with us, he's going to get his training time, probably limit his kicking, but he's going to get a lot of hand work done, so that probably progresses him a wee bit further ahead, whereas he'd maybe if, if we'd stayed at home, he probably wouldn't have took part in training the next week, but um, we're going away in the sun, we're going to get a lot of hand work into Shamal short and sharp, um, and limit his kicking, but Shamal should be in a good place on his return. Um, Jamie, Jamie's coming along nicely, um, he doesn't need an operation which is a huge bonus but he's probably still six to eight weeks away from returning to the first team. Curtis Guffrey's coming to the end, he's rehab but it's probably still two weeks of intensive work with Andy the physio before he comes into first team training. So, um, Shan who the intern with the, the first team, Shan's not coming away with, so Shan's got a programme for the injured players and hopefully Curtis isn't a million miles away from when we return from Turkey to join in first team training. Obviously long term Tom Parks, we know it's, it's one that might be towards the end of the season, but is there any kind of update on his progress? Yeah, the swelling, he's got a dry knee they call it, so his swelling and everything's right down in his knee and we've just stepped up his rehab, got to be really really careful on how we approach his rehab. It's kind of a soft introduction to it. You can parts his, you've got to put the reins on him a wee bit and pull him back, but that's the swelling and everything out of the knee now. No pain in the knee, range, range of movement's very good. So parts of it again, uh, I've not really had a proper detailed chat with Andy as such, because um, that's just, just managed to get all the swelling out of the knee, knee recently. Um, I'd, I'd imagine parts is somewhere around eight weeks, eight weeks or so before he could be returning to first team training. And lastly, half season tickets went on sale this week for supporters. Um, the club offering you not know, just thirty pounds for for kids tickets. How important is it for you, not only from a financial sense in terms of helping with any potential budget for players, but just having more bums on seats, more fans there on a Saturday? Is it is it important to you to see those numbers coming through the gate and, and cheering on the team, particularly if you're trying to fight at the top half of the table? I think it's hugely important getting the crowd numbers up it's, has a huge impact with the players and the staff on the, the bench and on the park in the match day. That would be even nicer if we can do that. Obviously, we've been doing that by giving away the community tickets, but that would be even nicer doing that by paying customers. Um, so hopefully there's a few mums and dads watching this video and you could maybe ask your kids, maybe ask Santa if they could get them a half season ticket, but um, it'd be really, really good to try and get the numbers up as much as possible. I think we've got a genuine, this year, got a genuinely competitive team on the park, got, started the campaign fairly well and anything at all in terms of fan numbers that can be increased, it's, it's going to help the players, it's going to help myself on the park. So. It's huge, it's absolutely huge and I think the pricing, the pricing's it's probably the best in the Premier League if I'm honest and it's probably no far off even the Championship, like being one of the better prices in the Championship football but you're getting Premier League football for that so hopefully the pricing's right and hopefully we can get as many bums on seats as possible and we've had a great uptake on the community tickets, it's a fantastic uptake, uh, uptake on that and hopefully we can convert that to some of that into and I don't mean this as, but half cash, it brings money into the club and it kind of makes sure that you're going to have that individual sitting in that seat for every match, home game, rather than every now and again when we do the, the free tickets. So hopefully we can see the numbers increase. Thanks, David. Cheers. Thank you.